Hey there, everybody, and welcome to the channel. I'm your host, Rama, and in today's video, we are going to be breaking into the 10 best ways of making money in Grand Theft Auto Online. Now, this isn't going to be a money method video. This is going to be a video where I list the 10 best properties and businesses to own to make a lot of money. You can obviously design any money-making method you want with these businesses, but I'm here just to tell you, in my opinion, which ones are the best, which ones are the worst, so uh, let's get straight into it. As you can see, we are making our way over towards the hangar, and the hangar does arrive in the 10th place position for today's video. I personally do not like the hangar that much. It's not a bad business, like you can still make money with it, and if you have friends helping you, it can actually be quite lucrative. However, as a solo player, the hangar is one of the lesser efficient ways of making money. Even if you're selling in a public lobby getting the high demand bonus, it just really doesn't pay all that much. However, the hangar does have some really good things going for it. First of all, it does obviously store all of your personal aircraft, so if you do want to own jets like the F-160 Raiju, the B-11 Strike Force, and the Rogue, this is a great way to do so. But not only that, you also have the business end of operations where you can earn some spending cash. The way the hangar works is you have to source crates. It's basically special cargo, but for flying vehicles. There are two different ways you can source crates. You can do land or air missions. The land missions are faster and easier, so I would highly recommend to do them if you plan on using the hangar. The number one sourcing of materials that you should do are medical supplies, chemicals, or narcotics. These are going to pay you the most money. And the best way to use the hangar is to source only one type of goods. So you should only source narcotics, chemicals, or medical supplies, and only one of them. You shouldn't do 50-50 like you can see here, because the more of a singular supply you source, the bigger the bonus you get on your payout. The hangar is definitely not anything special. It will get boring after you have repeated the same land missions over and over for 200 times, but it is a fun property to own because of the fact you can obviously own a lot of jets and because of the fact you have low clearance access to the military base. Just a big bit of advice I can give is do not buy the most expensive hangar. You can see that there are three hangars on the Fort San Kudo property. There's one for 3.2 million, one for 2.6, and then there's the one I own which is like 2.1 million. Buy the cheapest property. All of the hangars have the exact same floor space, meaning that each one of them you can own the same amount of vehicles or aircraft in. So just buy the cheapest one. There's literally no downside to it. So our hangar is in the number 10 position. In the number nine slot, we arrive at Vehicle Cargo. Now, I like Vehicle Cargo. I think it's one of the more fun businesses to mess around with. And if you pair it with other ways of making money, it can actually be quite lucrative. However, the Vehicle Cargo business itself really doesn't make that much money. You can sell three vehicles an hour because there is a 20 minute cooldown upon selling a car. And if you're selling a vehicle in a solo session, you're going to have NPCs that spawn on you that try to shoot up your vehicle. Yes, you can blow up the three waves of cars, but it wastes time to do so. So the most efficient way to take advantage of vehicle cargo is selling in a public lobby. This is not only going to give you the high demand bonus, but it is also going to make it so no NPCs spawn on you. So you're going to make $130,000 on a top range car if you sell in a high demand lobby, which is actually a pretty decent chunk of money for very little effort. And if you can sell three vehicles, that means you're going to be making $390,000 every hour you put in the vehicle cargo. The nice thing about this business is it doesn't take that much effort to actually do the sale missions themselves, and sourcing the vehicles is also really quick. So you might only have to put about 20 minutes of effort in to get $400,000 of profit back every hour. But still, I personally don't think that vehicle cargo is that impressive of a business. As I said, it really just doesn't make that much money. And as you can see, as I said before, selling in a solo session is going to have NPC spawn on you. That's not the end of the world. You can very easily outmaneuver them, and you're only probably going to lose about $1,000 on vehicle damage if they shoot at your car a bit, but it is still quite annoying. So because of that, vehicle cargo is going to make it into the number nine position. Now, one bit of advice I can give is only getting top range cars. There are 10 mid-range and 10 standard range vehicles in vehicle cargo, and there are 12 top range. 
And if you continuously source over and over and over, the game is going to try and not give you duplicates. And what that means is after you get all of the mid range, all of the top range and all of the standard range vehicles, only sell the top range. Because when you start sourcing, you will only be able to source top range cars. It makes it way, way more efficient and it is going to maximize the amount of money you can earn when it comes to vehicle cargo. Some people say that this method doesn't work anymore. I can assure you it does as I've been doing it for the past month and it works every single time. In the number eight position, we arrive at one of my favorite properties in the game, especially for managing my other businesses, which is the arcade. Now, there is actually two ways of making money with this business, one of which makes it one of the best in the game, and that is the Diamond Casino Heist. If you have two players, it is a great way of making money. It's way more fun than doing the Kaioprico Heist over and over, and because of that, the Diamond Casino Heist is actually great to mess around with with friends. It's going to pay you a lot of money. So, yeah, if you do have friends playing GTA, I would highly recommend to do that. But obviously, as you read in the title of today's video, this is a solo best business video, so the heist doesn't really apply to today's content. The other way of making money with the arcade is this safe in front of me. You can see I've just grabbed $100,000 out of the safe. And that is because you'll notice that my arcade has a bunch of Monkey's Paradise machines spread across the area. Monkey's Paradise is the cheapest arcade machine by far. And if you spam it in every single slot, which you can do, you will get the maximum of $5,000 every 48 minutes of passive income. It's not a lot of money, but to be fair, I have probably made $2 million from my arcade just playing GTA while this has been running in the background. So you do make money back, and essentially the business pays for itself as long as you put those arcade machines down and you play GTA for an extended period of time. The major reason the arcade is actually a really good property to own is because of the Terminal Command Center, which is underneath the basement. As we can see, the Terminal Command Center has a bunch of different businesses that we can manage. So if I want to do vehicle cargo, I can source my vehicle cargo from the arcade instead of having to head over to my office building. I can also do special cargo here. I can source and sell from the singular location. I can do my motorcycle club businesses. I can do bunker supplies. I can do my nightclub. For example, see how my nightclub popularity is zero right now? Well, I can go over to Resident DJ and I can rebook a couple DJs back and forth, back and forth. And as you'll notice, my nightclub popularity has now boomed up to about 25 percent and you can also manage your hangar so it's really nice that you can restock all of your businesses from one single area it makes traversing the map way easier way faster and you don't really need to worry all too much about your passive businesses as long as you can see them from one area so because of that i think the arcade's a great property to own in the number seven position, we arrive at the bunker. Now the bunker is actually a really, really nice property if you want to focus on passive income and you can sprinkle some extra spending cash on with the excess weapons parts. Essentially every 48 minutes, this truck is going to appear inside of your bunker. If you deliver it to a two to three mile drive, you will make $50,000. It's actually kind of nice. I mean, it's not the most money ever, but the fact that you can basically get some free cash without having to do much effort is quite nice. The major selling point of the bunker is the fact that you can make some passive income. And while you're making passive income, you are also upgrading your vehicles. For example, the weaponized Tampa, you can get all the weapons the proximity mines, everything like that from your bunker research. So if we make our way onto the computer here, you can see that we have a resupply and research tab. So the research tab is where you can get all these unlocks. You can see we've got the remote minigun, we've got the heavy armor, we've got, you know, another minigun for our insurgent. These are all the upgrades and liveries and, you know, especially one of the most important things to get is the explosive rounds for the uh, sniper. These are all really important things to do and that's one of the major reasons why the bunker is a very important business to own. But the other thing which is great is the bunker is obviously passive and you can make a lot of money with it. Just taking a look at my bunker alone, I've earned $21 million from it with a total of 43 cents. Sales. And judging that I don't really do sale missions anymore, that's a crap ton of money. So I definitely would say that the bunker is a great property. It earns around $90,000 every single hour while running it. And when you pair that with the fact that the bunker very, very rarely gets raided, and it is just a super chill business to do the sale missions with if you properly uh, know how to do them, there's really no issue whatsoever. My advice when it comes to bunker sale missions is sell once you have done one or two resupplies. 
What I mean by that is when you pay $75,000 for supplies, sell the first time you do it. It'll be worth about $210,000 when you sell to Los Santos. The reason you want to sell when it is worth that much money is because of the fact you will only get one vehicle in your delivery mission. Every subsequent resupply is going to give you an additional vehicle for your delivery mission. And sometimes you will get four buggies or, you know, three insurgent Merryweather missions where you simply don't have enough time to do these missions as a solo player. Because of that, I don't put the bunker incredibly high. There's nothing really special about the business apart from that little excess weapons and, you know, the passive income, but there are definitely better businesses which we'll be talking about in today's video. I think the bunker's great though, and I would definitely recommend to pick it up, especially if you want some extra passive juicers. We move on to the newest business which has been added into Grand Theft Auto online being the chop shop and the chop shop is actually quite good i hated on it when it was first released because there really isn't much going for the property and it does get quite boring however i really like the way the secondary earnings are done now there are two different ways to make money with the chop shop the first way is making your way over to the planning computer this is where you are able to steal three vehicles so in front of me we can see there is a grotti Italia rsx there is a benefactor schlagen gt and an albany hermes you can steal three vehicles a week and sell them now you can either sell them for as we can see two hundred thousand dollars to four hundred thousand dollars or you can salvage them salvaging is much better while it does take 48 minutes to get the payment the reason salvaging is better is because it also gives you passive income. You'll notice that I have a wall safe with $8,000 in the bottom corner of my screen. And the way to increase the amount of money that you make passive with that wall safe is either salvaging vehicles instead of selling or doing tow truck service missions. These are really fast. You need to drive usually like one to two miles, go pick up a vehicle, bring it back to your chop shop, and you're going to make not only about $30,000 for each vehicle that you grab, but you're also going to have $24,000 of passive income every 48 minutes when doing this. So you can see we only have to drive 0.5 miles here. And after making it to the location, literally all you got to do is grapple the vehicle and drive another 0.5 miles back. This mission literally took me one minute. That's it, one minute, and I made $30,000, plus I'm going to get passive income, which is probably gonna equal up to about $100,000 worth. That is an absolute dub. You can do two tow truck sources every single 48 minutes, and then the vehicles will disappear, and you can do them once again. So because of that, I actually think the chop shop is quite nice. This passive income is great. You have to do very minimal effort to keep the money coming in. It's just a fantastic business because of that. We are now in the fifth place position, which brings us to the Acid Lab. Lab, which is just an absolutely amazing property. The Acid Lab is great because of convenience. For example, most passive properties, you have to go drive over to the location or over to the arcade if you want to resupply them. However, you can see I'm scrolling on my phone until I find Mutt. And once I find Mutt, I'm just going to call him and he's going to ask me if I want to buy supplies. There you go. Yes, I want to buy supplies. $60,000 taken from my bank account. The Acid Lab will automatically get those supplies delivered. I never even have to go over to the property to make sure that the business is running. And unlike most passive businesses, the Acid Lab can never get raided. So once again, an absolute win. So it can't ever get raided. And it's just absolutely amazing because of that. You don't need to lift a finger. The Acid Lab is also a mobile property, which means you don't need to drive to any physical location to actually go to the property. You just have to call it in and then you can head right inside of the Acid Lab. As you can see, I currently have $250,000 worth of product in here. Now, the only thing that's a little bit of a bummer about the Acid Lab is the payment isn't amazing for the sale missions and that's why it isn't anything higher. But you can actually make some decent hourly income, about $70,000, and you can boost your Acid Lab production once every real life day by double the production for one hour, which is actually really nice. So I do think the Acid Lab's a great property and because it's so easy to use and the vehicle itself that it spawns in is fantastic, I'd actually say it's really, really good to get your hands on. In the number four position, we arrive at, in my opinion, one of the most underrated properties in the game, the Auto Shop. The auto shop's great. First of all, it looks amazing. I think this is one of the nicest looking properties in the game. I just wish it had a bigger garage. But there's a couple things that make the auto shop fantastic when it doesn't even have to do with making money. First of all, it comes with a fully customizable uh, vehicle workshop. So any vehicle that you own, you can bring right over to the chop shop, fully customized. And it gets even better. If you are under level 100, all of the customization is fully unlocked. 
So you are no longer gate kept by your level. You can unlock any purchase you want, any modification from level one to level 20. It's amazing. That's fantastic. All the upgrades are 5% cheaper, and that adds up. If you upgrade a car and you spend $100,000, you're saving $5,000. And if you upgrade 100 cars, that means you could be saving upwards of millions of dollars on the upgrades that you're doing. Not only that, but certain resprays are free if you make your way over to the respray option, primary color. If you want to do classic paint jobs, they're free, so if you want to save a bit of money there, absolutely free to do that. Also, the crew color is free, which is also amazing. So if you have a crew color you really like, you can make that completely free as well. The crew emblem is free. These are normally $25,000 to put on your vehicle. So uh, yeah, just alone in the customization aspect, the auto shop is amazing, but there's also auto shop contracts. And these are also a great way of making money. Occasionally, Rockstar will have a double money or even triple money weekend where the auto shop becomes an absolute beast of a business. But even if it's not, you know, the most efficient way of making money, there are still pretty good payouts here. Usually you want to go for the union depository contract, which is going to pay you a very, very nice $300,000 each time you complete it. You can see I've done 30 auto shop contracts and I've net $10.6 million. That's a lot of money for especially not actually that many contracts when you think about it. So I've netted about 300 ish thousand dollars on average for my auto shop contracts. And for your first time completing each of the individual contracts, contracts, you're going to net an additional $100,000, or I think maybe it's $75,000. But again, it's just really nice that you're able to get that extra chunk of income. The other thing that's great about the auto shop is when doing auto shop contracts, you are going to increase your LS car meet reputation level. And once you go past level 100 in the LS car meet, every five levels you go, so level 100, 105, 110, 115, you are going to get a 10% discount voucher on any vehicle in Legendary Motorsport or Southern San Andreas, which is actually kind of insane when you think about it. So I would highly recommend to mess around with the auto shop. It's an amazing property. It looks amazing as well. There is another way of making money. We've got the uh, customer vehicles, which we can sell, but I personally don't think this actually makes that much, so I can't recommend to use it. We are now nearing the three best properties in Grand Theft Auto Online for making money and having fun. In the number three position, we arrive at the nightclub. And I mean, the nightclub is always gonna make it into the top three. It is such a fantastic property. There are two different ways of making money with the nightclub. Both of them require you to basically never lift a finger. The first way of making money with a nightclub is grabbing money out of your wall safe. You'll notice that I have a nightclub popularity bar. And there are two different ways to raise this popularity. The first way is Marcel's gonna message you. You can see, hey boss, someone in Tony's VIP list is missing somewhere heading upstairs. Can you find them? Uh, so what you have to do is bring the VIP over towards a location. So we can do that right now. Let's head over towards this back little area where somebody's throwing up and we're gonna take the VIP back to their house. The VIP has been delivered and our nightclub popularity has been increased, as you can see. Now, when we head back inside of our nightclub, we can see that the popularity went up about one and a half bars and is basically in the middle. So that is the first way of changing your nightclub popularity. It's very easy to do and takes very little effort. The second way of raising your nightclub popularity is going over to Resident DJ and rebooking DJs over and over. It's gonna cost you $10,000 each time you swap the DJ, but it's going to increase your nightclub popularity by about 10%. And you will definitely make more money than you spend swapping DJs. It's very easy, very low effort, and uh, definitely worth it if you don't wanna put that much time into using Marcel. The nightclub is going to earn you $50,000 every 48 minutes, and it's going to go directly into this wall safe. So the only unfortunate thing is that you have to make sure you're constantly keeping up the popularity, and you have to make sure that you are constantly grabbing the money or it's going to max out and you're not going to be making any more while your popularity continues to decrease. Now, the second way of making money with the nightclub is also really, really solid, and that is the passive side of the business. So if we make our way over to the computer to warehouse management, you can see we have goods. And I currently have $671,000 worth of goods in my property that I can sell at any given time. Essentially, I've got technicians assigned to different properties. We've got cargo and shipments, which is special cargo. We've got sporting goods. South American Imports is obviously Coke. Pharmaceutical Research is the math lab. So we got a bunch of different properties that these technicians are working for. 
and they are accruing me goods over time. All I need to do is press the sell button once every maybe week or so, and I'm gonna net maybe about a million, two million dollars, depending on if I sell in a public lobby or not. I've made upwards of 38 million dollars with my nightclub. 24 of that million has been done in warehouse earnings. 14 million of that has been from grabbing passive income. The nightclub almost never gets raided. It is an absolutely amazing business, and there is no reason you shouldn't buy one, especially for how cheap they are to get your hands on. Definitely would recommend to get your hands on the nightclub. In the number two position, we arrive at the agency. And I mean, this is just such a good property. The agency has so many different amazing things going for it. First of all, let's talk about the money side and then we'll talk about the amenities. So making your way upstairs to your office computer, you will find multiple different ways of making money. First of all, we can see that I have a wall safe. Right now there's $80,000 in this wall safe and it will constantly go up. Every 48 minutes, this wall safe is going to increase by $20,000. And that is because I am doing security contracts. Essentially, every five security contracts you complete, you are going to get $200 of passive income added into your wall safe. And that is going to be a permanent income increase. So once you have completed 200 agency contracts, you are going to get the maximum of $20,000 every 48 minutes. These are the security contracts you need to complete to get that passive income. The great thing is that you are not only making money, 30 to 40 to $50,000 each one of these security contracts you complete, but it's also giving you that passive income. So this alone is a great way of making money. Then you arrive to the VIP contract. This is where you can net $1 million in around an hour and 20 minutes by doing the Dr. Trey VIP. There are a bunch of different missions you have to do, the Nightlife Leak, the High Society Leak, and the South Central, which each alone have three separate missions there. So there are a lot of things you have to do. But after getting this kind of smooth down and you figure out how to do it properly, you'll earn a million dollars in no time. It's a really solid way of making money, especially when Rockstar doubles the payout of the agency, making it like the best way of making money. The other way of getting income is going over to your phone and calling Franklin, requesting a payphone hit. Now, I don't think I can call Franklin inside of the agency. No, I'm not able to. But essentially, if you call Franklin on the phone, you can request a payphone hit. And these will pay you $45,000. They should only take you three to five minutes to complete. And there's a 10-minute cooldown. So you can just spam them. Great way of making money as well. Now we can talk about the amenities for this business. First of all, if you walk over to the agency services, you can request a personal vehicle that is inside of your agency garage, or you can get a free helicopter, an agency Super Voltio. That makes completing missions as a new player absolutely amazing because you can literally just get a free helicopter, use it whenever you want, and I mean, that's like a $2 million helicopter. So yeah, when it comes to the agency, the things that you get with the property are amazing. Then we make our way downstairs. The agency comes with a 21 car garage, which you can see I have completely filled out with all of my personal vehicles. And the best thing about the agency is yet to come because we haven't talked about Imani Tech vehicles. This car here, you'll notice there's like this weird padding on the side, looks kind of like uh, foot pads. Well, those pads are actually armor plating. You see, you can customize vehicles inside of your agency, just like the auto shop. You're not going to get a discount, but you can still customize cars. And you'll notice there are Armani tech upgrades, missile lock on jammer and a remote control unit. And there's also armor plating. These armor plates allow certain cars to survive ridiculous amounts of explosions and a beating. For example, this car can survive 10 homing missiles before being blown up. And with the missile lock on jammer, you aren't even able to aim in on this car with homing missiles to begin with. Because of that, it is no doubt that the agency is an absolutely incredible business with everything added together. This is by far one of the best beginner properties that you can buy. That brings us to the number one business in Grand Theft Auto Online, and that is the Kosatka. Yes, I know, people are gonna go into the comments, oh my god, he's obsessed with the Kyoprika heist, it's really, really boring. Honestly, those comments just amuse me, because at the end of the day, you can't dispute that the Kyoprika heist is the best way of making money in the game. And whether or whether or not you find it fun does not discount how effective it is. If you're a new player, and you're wondering what the best ways to get started by buying other properties, this is what you should be buying. 
That's factual. Like, sure, it might get boring to do the Kaioprico heist after your 10th time, but after 10 times of doing the heist, you have already netted upwards of 12 to $15 million, especially if you add in your first time bonus. That's enough money to get set up with your nightclub, to get set up with your agency, to get set up with your bunker, to get set up with the acid lab, to a point where you don't need to use the Kaioprico heist as your main source of income. That's what people keep forgetting. If you're a new player, you still need to buy other properties. And the best way to do that is making money as fast as possible. So because of that, I always recommend new people to get their hands on the Kaioprico heist. And if you haven't purchased this property yet, it is a great way of making money. And even if you don't want to spam it, it is still fun. Like the heist itself for the first couple times, especially if you want to do it with friends and try the different ways of approaching, they're really fun. If you're a tryhard like me and you're only doing the heist one way over and over and over and it's, you know, concrete pathing, then yeah, it's going to get boring. But I can tell you for a fact that if you do this with friends and you do it the right way, it will be quite enjoyable and you can easily do it 20, 30 times and you'll have a lot of fun. I have probably made over 200 to $300 million doing the Kaioprico heist, which is 10 times the next highest of a lot of my other properties, but it makes sense because it's just such an efficient way of making money. The Kosatka not only features the Kaioprico heist, which it also has is the Sparrow. And this is another reason why this property is amazing. Nobody can tell me the Sparrow is not a good purchase because it's probably one of the most important things you can own in the game. The Sparrow is one of the fastest flying helicopters in the game at 168 miles per hour. It features flares, it features missiles, and you can spawn it in wherever you are in immediately. Because of this, it makes the Sparrow an absolute S-tier vehicle. And judging that it's only $1.7 million, that means essentially you'll have to do the Kaioprico Ice two times and you'll have the Sparrow. This vehicle is really all you'll ever need for modes of transportation in the game. It's absolutely amazing and yeah, it's just an instant dub. So this is my list of the top 10 properties and best ways of making money solo in Grand Theft Auto Online. Hopefully you enjoyed today's video. Let me know if you agree or disagree with my takes. I think that all of the properties I went over can be decent if you combine them with passive income and you do everything right. However, I don't think individually most of these are fantastic, especially the lower five individually just aren't very good. You definitely want to be looking at the top five if you want to make individual income. Hopefully you enjoyed today's video. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.